Hey, where'd the Oracle go? I don't know. But is anyone else getting that buzzing? What do you say we give these new bots a test drive? What's up, Maximals and Predacons? Welcome to another episode of Too Much Energon, a laser comb production. The podcast where we talk about Beast Wars shit and talk shit about Beast Wars. I am one of your hosts, NeoCal. And I am your other host, Christopher Siege. Christopher Siege, we are reviewing episode one of Beast Machines. Came yep, out we... in September eighteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, we, um, we we did it. We did it. We on this podcast about Beast Wars, we officially ran out of Beast Wars. So here we are. Here we're we are. The, we're in the the second year of uh, of Beast Wars. This is our second year of too much energon. This is too much energon phase two, if you will. Too much energon. Electric Boogaloo. Too much Energon 2.0. <laughs> Too uh, fast. Too Energon. <laughs> Too fast. Too Energon. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the new name of the podcast. kind of is. It's kind that's, of Too Fast to Energon. That's what the, uh, the, the new name of this podcast is. Um, Too Fast to Energon. <laughs> Uh, so what's, uh, what's been going on lately there, Cal? I, uh, bit the bullet and I have a completely new computer rig. Um, mm. I assembled, uh, from, actually, yeah, I think it's the first time I fully assembled, um, a PC. Very nice. And, uh, it was fun. I did it myself. Um. My partner helped me look through some manuals for some nitty gritty things, but it was an experience, and I did it pretty lickety split. So the only, the only thing I ever get uh, hung up on when uh, putting a computer together from scratch is like the cables that plug into the motherboard that are for like the power and reset buttons and whatnot, because there are so many prongs. And it's oh. like, which, which one do I plug into which? And so, like, anytime I put together a, a new tower, I always have to, like, go to, like, a YouTube video or something. Um, I am very lucky that when I put everything together, the coolant, all, the cooler, all of that stuff, the cooling system, the uh, fucking um, gigantic uh, GPU... And like, oh, the USB, where does that plug in? I know what you're talking about. Where does that plug into on the motherboard? There's a yeah, thousand yeah. little prongs, but it only plugs into two. Yeah. And it I has just to be the right up... ones. Otherwise, it won't work. <laughs> the exact <laughs> right ones. And I was looking at my motherboard like manual, and I'm like, okay, there are three prongs here, but I have to plug this two, two prong thing into the furthest left ones? Well, what is the third prong there for? <laughs> Whatever. And I, I did it all on my first try it's an extra you know it's a, it's just there. 
But yeah, there's there's once look. I put I put this desk together, and I have all these extra pieces. (laughs) I must have done it properly. Yeah, because I yeah, that's cool. In the flesh, what uh, what's your what kind of specs is your uh, new rig rocking? I have a um. Have you ever noticed that CPUs, like motherboards, have the stupidest names? It's like an Asus tough gaming motherboard. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all have like Giga Max and tough gaming and like yeah, I, I, Corsair. Like they, they all have names like that. I, I can't. Mine has a stupid name like that too. I can't even remember what it is. It's like. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and it's like a, a Ryzen 7 5800 uh, processor. Uh, the GPU is a, um, uh, 3070X, like, TI, which, is, I guess that's a little bit better than the, just the 3070. Yeah. NVIDIA, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and it's a nice, it's got a nice modular, um, power source. I think the TI means totally insane, personally. I think so. It gives you that little bit of edge <laughs> when you're when you're playing COD. Yeah. And it lights up like a rainbow. That mean that makes it go faster. Everyone knows that. Yeah. I always uh uh I, I mentioned this to, to Cal off air recently, but I always find it funny, especially when you go to like uh Reddit, like go to like R slash PC master race and You'll see these builds that people put together, and it's like they'll have a mediocre CPU, a thousand watt power supply, like eight gigs of RAM, and like liquid like a like a big ass like liquid cooler for a cpu that really doesn't need it because it's such a like liquid cooling like system for yeah for for like a doesn't need it for like a mid-grade cpu that really doesn't need it and like five thousand rgb lights and they're like look at my mad gaming rig (laughs) bro mad gaming rig (laughs) and it's like so you're like first off you're you're getting like a mediocre at best cpu you're wasting hundreds of dollars on a liquid cooler that you don't need you're spend you're getting a thousand watt power supply that you don't need you're getting all the you're wasting money on all this rgb lighting instead of dumping that money into stuff that will actually improve the computer its performance like it's I, it, I, yeah it i stayed away from that <laughs> I, I well, stay away from that uh, that subreddit. Um, I didn't even visit the subreddit for. Um, there's a subreddit for helping people like build their own PCs and for noobs and stuff like that. I yeah, I think even, it's like r slash build a PC or something or just something like that. Yeah, I I guess I didn't need to go there. I haven't put together a PC in like man, embarrassingly like like I don't know like eight seven years or something like that, and I. I did it. The nice. only thing that's different between now and a decade ago is that the GPU is instead of being a, a chip with like a little fan on it that fits perfectly in there, it is an eight pound monstrosity that you have to <laughs> that has like three fans on it. That has three fans on it and has the rainbow. So when you look down at your PC because you have a glass side to it, yep. you can taste the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> You so can feel, feel the glow. So for for the first time in like ever, and oh, man, and the technology is so different from now and like eight years ago. Like, do you remember oh, when, yeah. like, in order to stream like eight, ten years ago, you had to had to have like a separate GPU dedicated to running the streaming software. Yeah, um, yeah. You you basically needed to like cross like Crossfire or whatever it's called. Oh, and or, or you needed like a capture card. No, man. <laughs> the future is now. It's it's easier now. If I can do it, anybody can do it. 
We don't need any of that shit around here. <laughs> no. Yeah, your computer no. is uh your computer is more powerful than mine now. And all it took me was not upgrading my computer for almost a decade. And spending many, many dollars. Oh, and also that. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I got a um I I I upgraded last year so I have a um uh a Ryzen 7 3700X 16 gigs of DDR4 like 3000 megahertz RAM uh I think I have a oh. 750 or 650 watt power supply maybe yeah I, are right. you going to need more than that I, No probably not No I have a um, 750 yeah um Oh man, I, so much stuff glows now. So much RGB. He's like, "Hey man, so there's RGB RAM, or like you can just get the stuff that like doesn't." And I'm like, "What's the difference?" He's like, "Oh, like the cost, the the cost." And I'm like, "No, I'm I'm cool. It's going under my desk. It's kind of cool to see like the graphics card like rainbow it up a little bit, but I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, dog." Yeah, my my motherboard has RGB lighting on it. Um, that wasn't really a choice. I bought the motherboard simply because it was at a time where, like, I think mine has a little bit, but it's covered by the monstrous cooling system in the GPU. <laughs> it was at a time where, like, uh, I think it was like ryzen 7 chips like on certain motherboards required a bios update the motherboard required a bios update for it to work properly and like there were a handful of them that were like oh they're they're uh the bios update has already been uh done like before like right out of the box and there were only a handful of these motherboards that actually had that bios update pre-installed so I went with the cheapest one uh, out of those. <laughs> and it also has like a bunch of RGB lighting on it. So I'm like, uh, okay, whatever. What and my and my <clears throat> CPU fan, the stock CPU fan that came with it, uh, has like a ring of RGB light. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll send you Very a picture cool of it sometime. Indeed. Yeah. Um oh the the dude shout out to the people at uh, Memory Express in Victoria. Have you, have you been in there, Christopher? I have not. I, I don't usually go to computer stores. <laughs> um, I buy I, on Newegg. I thought about... Yeah, they, they do price matching. So oh, I cool. just kind of... Yeah, I just kind of did did everything through there so I could like walk out ready to build my PC. Um, nice. I didn't know that until I like walked in there. And um, man... They had some actually pretty good sales. So wait, so, they'll price match Newegg? Uh, specifically, I think so. Oh, that's good to know. I will keep that in mind. Also, they're just chill. They'll be like, oh, hey, this is like third gen. You can get like a second gen and it's like 50 bucks less. Like the NVMe cards. Yeah. And like you can get a second gen with two terabytes for this much. Um, it's about the same price as this third gen for for one terabyte. And I'm like, what's the difference? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> when your video game loading screens are like five seconds, a third gen might be bring it down to like three seconds. Bro, that's I, two whole seconds. Like, bro, that that'll <laughs> give you the edge, the edge in in COD. Man, yeah, that'll give you the edge in COD and NHL 21. Well, it's awfully fitting that we're talking about all of this machinery and specs because boy oh boy, do we got a lot of machines going on in this episode. Yeah, yeah, we're uh, beast machines. Yeah, we're we're gonna get into talking about the episode in just a second here, but first, here's a word about our Patreon. Do you want to hear more Lasercomb content each and every week? Is one episode each of Too Much Energon or Alphanumeric simply not enough? 
then boy do I have a solution for you. Go to patreon.com slash lasercom, L-A-Z-O-R-C-O-M-B, where starting at a mere $5 per month, you get literal hours of bonus preamble audio each and every week, access to the Lasercom Discord, monthly shoutouts, and more. At the $10 and up tier, you get our weekly weird news show, Lasercom Tonight, as well as our Too Much Energon spin-off, Too Much Galavar, where we talk about the monthly IDW 2021 Beast Wars comic book. Yeah! At the $25 tier, you get all of that, plus our monthly Too Much Commentary commentary track, a free t-shirt, and more. Support Lasercom Tonight, today. So this week on Too Much Energon, we are reviewing the first episode of Beast Machines. We're here. Uh, we we've we've left Planet Energon. Planet the Beast Wars are over once and for all. They are. And Planet Who Energon is a distant memory in the rearview mirror of the Ark's hidden escape shuttle. Yeah. yeah. So long. Yeah. So the episode opens with a uh, on a planet with a flower and a uh, very familiar looking gorilla. Hold up, what do you think of the intro? Oh, the intro. Um, okay, so I, I that is I think that's that is actually something that's worth talking about. So Beast Wars, being a cartoon from the mid '90s, had <laughs> followed the early to mid '90s trend of having like very rockin' guitar-driven music. This is very turn of the century, man. The music in this show is very reminiscent of like the Matrix soundtrack. Thank you. Okay, I was like, please, <laughs> please say the Matrix because holy <laughs> shit, there's so much to say about this. Um, yeah. when it opened, I was like, this is very turn of the century, and the Matrix was key in like turn of the century like culture. It might not have lasted a long time, like maybe a year or two, but like this music feels like it could be in the like credits. Of, like, well, one of the Matrix movies. Well, and this show, like, came out the same year as The Matrix, but The Matrix came out in April 99, and this came out in September 99. Oh, that, is en- that is enough time for the composer to have seen The Matrix and take and go, notes. This is hype shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, very, very, uh, like you said, turn of the century uh, music. And you know what? I kind of dig it. And and it's short. There's no lyrics or anything. But man, there's no man's voice yelling Beast Wars. So how do I know what show I'm watching? <laughs> uh how how do I know uh what what toys to go tell my mom <laughs> to to go buy for me? Right? Like how much mo- Hopefully how- in the first episode um and let it be called. Let us, let, let us be called Beast Machines. Did it? Did it? Did it? Bum 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 bum. Um, amazingly though, that doesn't happen. So sorry, you were saying there is a plant. Yeah, it gets trampled by a very, uh, very familiar-looking gorilla man, who's being chased mm-hmm. by some, by some fucking tank transformers. Some, yeah, some tanks, some tank dudes. So interesting, organic life can form on Cybertron. Yeah, that's uh, news to me. I Today I learned, folks. So uh, we, we find out that this uh, very familiar looking gorilla man is our old pal Gary Primal. And, and uh, an OG Gary and... Primal. Yeah, Gary is in his uh, season one form, and and there's there's no explanation in the show. So the the trans metals are not a thing in this at all. Like forget, we forget everything you learned about trans metals. Done. Forget everything you learned about season two and three of Beast Wars. Cheers, because there are no trans metals. There are no trans metals to trans metal twos. There is no. Well, actually, that's not true. We'll we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get we'll we'll get there. Yeah, uh, not this week, actually. 
Um, sorry, I didn't mean. To, I got a little ahead of myself. I, I, for the listeners, I, I binge like the first like three or four episodes of this like a month ago when I bought the DVD. Yeah. Um, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but yeah. Anyway, you want to so, it for free? It's on Tubi. Yes. Um. So yeah. Season one beast forms and it's not explained at all. Like what happened? Why, why is Optimus, uh, why is Gary primal himself no longer optimal? Who knows? But you know what? I, I don't I'm care. Okay with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with it. I, I don't care. I, I don't, I don't give a shit. I, I, I like the, their season one forms and yep. like, We've been on. I've been on record saying that, like, I think Beast Wars was best in its first season when the concept was at its purest. And and not only that, it contrasts well with the very harsh robotic world of Cybertron, having these yeah. more realistic animals just scrambling around. Yeah, and that's you like think- honestly, that's probably like the the contrast is probably the reason why the show creators why they- decided yeah. to to go that way with it. Because what seems to be happening here is the citizen the the forces on Cybertron don't seem to be able to tell to to recognize that they're Maximals. Yeah, because they're they're stuck in their animal form in yeah. their beast mode uh the opening man the music for this show oh it's like watching <laughs> the matrix but in beast beast wars mode like it's even like like the opening song is very mortal combat yeah i, I figured you would i figured you would like the music to this show i i i love this so much man <laughs> It's ridiculous, and it's nothing. At at first, I was like, I don't know if I hate this or love it. Like the explosions going on behind Optimus Primal, and I'm like, do I like this? And then very quickly, I was like, I do. Yeah. Uh, my partner pointed out to me. Uh, don't know if any of the listeners would know what Dungan Ronpa is, but the opening is very reminiscent You're of a right. Dungan Ronpa execution scene. <laughs> Your uh, your co-host doesn't even know what that is. Nobody does. It's an anime video game where you're stuck in a killing game and you need to find who done it. So it's like a video game where it's Clue, but it keeps going until everybody's dead. Aw, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of aw, oh, shit, uh, Gary Primal gets... Uh, that's his name from now on, by the way, listeners. He's Gary. He's Gary Primal. He's Gary Primal. Yep. So Gary Primal uh, is cornered by all these uh, tank drones and is like, well, I'll show you Optimus Maximize. But uh, that doesn't do shit. He he can't transform. No, there's like electricity sparking and he's short circuiting. And yeah. And he can't like, change. kind of partially transforms uh, again into his like season one robot form, which I'm like. I would have loved to have seen it like in its like fullest, like one last time, you know, at least he could have like gone to like full, like robot mode. And then like, just was forced back into beast mode. You you really want, you really miss season one. Beast Wars. I do. uh, Like that's, I, those are my favorite forms for all of the characters. Yeah. Um, Um, I, mine too. Yeah. But he, um, uh... it's interesting how well their beast modes, uh, because we're uh, Optimus uh, Gary Primal is about to run into the rest of the uh, not the rest, a, a few others maximals here and there, and it's almost like being stuck in their beast mode is better because Optimus is getting away from these Cybertronian like guards really well. He's like yeah, swinging he's, like a monkey on on bars. He's having on a grand bar. Time. He's literally like doing monkey bars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, then he sees some uh, mystical like guiding light, and he jumps on a truck. Uh, yeah, it's like a it, it's like a sky train type thing. 
like a tram. Yeah, he jumps and you, on you hear it. a familiar voice. You hear someone say, hey, this is my hiding spot. Yeah, and uh, it's Rat Trap. It's Rat Trap, old, folks. It's our old pal Rat Trap. He's and, like, fearless leader. Yeah, Rat Trap catches it catches him up on the, the fact that he can't rent that like everything's gone uh bananas, no pun intended, yeah. on Cybertron <laughs> and that he can't transform either and um, Yeah, for some for some reason the Maximals can't can't maximize, man. But then Optimus uh suddenly like comes to the conclusion that oh it must be a like virus preventing us from transforming and also remembering what happened. So we're also finding out that they have short-term amnesia. They don't yeah. remember how they got here and why they're on the run and yeah, what happened since we finished um, Beast Wars. Yeah. I, I find the... Uh, and indeed, like, this is definitely set after Beast Wars, too, because like Rat Trap even mentions, he's like, the last thing I remember is like, we were on our way back to Cybertron. Yes. Yeah. So um, it does establish that this is right after Beast Wars. Yeah. I still, I, I find it funny that like Gary Primal just like jumps to that conclusion right away. He's like, oh, there must be some kind of virus that is uh, making us forget and also preventing us from transforming. It's like, okay. All right, sure. <laughs> Scorponok invented a new cyber <laughs> venom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I thought he was dead. Or is he? he yeah. Yeah. May he rest in peace. <laughs> May he rip in peace. May he um, be rewarded in in the afterlife. May may there be eight of him for some reason on War for Cybertron Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to watch that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've I've seen it all at this point. Um, and it's just like what he's a throwaway character, but and there's and there's like eight of him. Yeah, I I I have thoughts about the the last couple episodes of that show, but uh, we will that talk is for about a different. That. We will talk about that someday. Not someday. Today. <laughs> uh, so the the tank bots like blast them out of their like sky train and. They go like flying, and they land on the ground, and like they're continuing to to flee. This whole episode is just them running, basically. It's them running and explosions happening, and like like Mortal Kombat meets like the Matrix, like music, like blasting in the background. Yeah, and I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. I like how Rat Trap when when they're running just keeps saying Rat Trap maximize, Rat Trap maximize, Rat Trap maximize over and over what? again. Yeah, and they get cornered at a wall, and he's like, "Rat trap, pretty please maximize." <laughs> Rat trap, pretty please maximize. Oh, there is a foe in my building. One sec. Uh oh, this is a uh, live conflict going on here on Too Much Energon. It's not just the 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 Maximals fighting the the tank or bots. No, it is whatever Neo Cal is dealing with. Destroyed a Predacon. Let's just say, <laughs> leave it. <at> that. <laughs> uh, good man. Um. So yeah, the <laughs> so yeah, uh, Gary and uh, Scotty are they're pinned. Ordered. Yeah, they're they're pinned, and uh, we meet another old friend. Our old the pal silhouette Tior. of a cheetah is behind them. Yeah, yeah, he's up on one of the like rail like. Skytrain rails or something. And uh, he jumps down and like uh, grabs the head of one of the grabs the, the head of, of one of the, the tank or bots and uh, yeah, distracts them and they uh, yeah, they flee. They're and, able uh, to they get away. The, the tank or bots, yeah, the tank or bots like shoot at Cheetor and blow up one of their own Tanks and a rat trap says or Cheetor says something like, oh, "Hey, like you just slagged your own guy. That's deep freeze cold." And I'm like, "Welcome back, Cheetor." <laughs> I, 
Cheetor back to saying some Cheetor bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I love it. One thing I noticed uh, about their beast forms is like, it's the same character models they had in season one, but the textures are different. Uh, they're less polygons, and but smoothed out. It's weird. Yeah. They're, they're less, they have less detail on them. Probably because they, yeah, I, I noticed that too. It's a little weird. Uh, yeah. Like they were, their textures were lower res. And I think it's because they were like, hey, these guys are just going to be in these forms for like, like 10 minutes. Yeah, for, for just this minutes. episode. Yeah. yeah, so it was like uh, when Di Dinobot, everyone else got a graphical update in like season, was it two or three or something? Season two, two yeah. And, um, but Dinobot still had this weird, like, like fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah, suddenly his, uh, his skin texture got like lower res. Yeah, and we were like, what? What's going so on what? here? What? Why? Is he being written off the show? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Go check out that episode of Too Much Energon and find out. So, what happens here? They jump in a hole because uh, Gary uh, Primal has a vision, right? Yeah, a hole gets or blown Or not a vision. Ground. He's following this guiding light. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a hole gets blown in the ground by the, the tank or bots, and uh, the hole's right in front of them. It's either... They, they're basically given the option of, like, jump down the hole or fight the, the tank ors, and uh, his, like, guiding light, like, sends, like, shoots down the hole. So Optimus is like, well, into the hole, guys. And, and they, they follow and him they, in the hole. And they do. Luckily, they land in a nice, soft, bouncy web. Uh-huh. Wonder who this could be. And uh, OG Black Arachnia descends from the darkness. And she's like, oh, it's you. <laughs> their, their faces as they're falling. Man, I miss the, the season one, like, expressive, like, Optimus face. And even Cheetah's face is like, or Cheetor's yeah. face is like, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> so I just paused it right at 634 on Tubi that cheat I'm I'm screen capping that cheetor <laughs> face 634 you say <laughs> amazing I might uh I, I already had show art for this this episode picked out, but I, I might actually make it like one of their goofy faces as they're falling. Keeping it on brand with too much energy on, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, sorry. They're all like... um, Basically, Black Arachnia doesn't need to be told what's going on. She's a smart cookie. And she's all like, I give us like two or three cycles before we just go offline. <laughs> like whatever's affecting us. <laughs> I'm on 654 right now, and just Cheetor. His like paws are like turned inward, and he's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I I think that's gonna be the 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 art for the episode. Oh, but but just a couple seconds after that, with um Optimus falling, and his mouth is like really. Those are both very Beast Wars <laughs> faces. I don't know what's better. <laughs> They're both pretty gay. Great. Well, I love Gorilla Face. <laughs> yeah. All right. So they, they land in Black Arachnia's web, and uh, Black Arachnia is like, she figures out right away that they, uh, they can't transform either, and so they're, like, affected with the same thing that's causing this transformation lock. And uh, Primal's like, hey, we gotta keep going, we gotta find a way. And they they put their faith in Gary Primal and uh, she estimates the sewers. The she, she estimates that the virus will take them offline permently in three cycles. Yeah. And uh, I, there's a cool However scene here. However long that may be. 
Who knows? But nobody knows. <laughs> uh, they have a really cool scene here where they descend through the depths of like middle Cybertron, and they're all like spelunking down uh, Black Arachnia's like silk. And Rat Trap's like, "What is all this?" I, I like um, Optimus's walking animation as they're walking through this pipe. <laughs> as they're going through the pipe there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's actually a pretty good gorilla walk. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh man, they did a good job gorilla walking him through there. Yeah, that's one of the better gorilla walks we've seen. Yeah, but yeah they descend through Middle Earth. <laughs> And um, eventually, um, it's kind of cool, like, discovering a lost civilization, right? They see, like, pyramids, and there's dim light, and eventually uh, Black Arachnia's silk is, like, running dry, and she's running out of energy, and they're all, like, getting tired and feeling like they're going to die soon, and they all just fall into the abyss. Mm -hmm. And... um, Instead of giving up, um, Gary Primal gets really angry and he throws a brick. I I don't know what else. To, that's what happened. <laughs> he throws a brick and then fire happens, and then there's fire. Yeah, and they're on like a um, on like a, a jade and like bronze like walkway. So so Gary decides to uh, touch the fire. To to very cautiously like go through the fire, and then as soon as he does, the fire like moves away, and we see this like kind of like chronoplast like looking like thing, big it's ass this... stargate with like, a, like it, it, it cuts to space. Yeah, it looks like like a I don't know. It looks like space. Like it looks like space in the middle of this. Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, Stargate looking thing. Holy fuck, it even has like glyphs all the way around it. It's yeah. totally like a Stargate. But and it turns so, like, into binary... a binary. Go ahead. But it, turn... it turns into a big spark and uh, shoots like a beam of light into Gary Primal. And uh, Gary figures out that this is the Oracle of Cybertron. Didn't know that this was a thing, but. Yeah. Apparently, the Oracle of Cybertron was the thing that uh, helped trans the original uh, robots who came to Cybertron millions upon millions of years ago, helped them reformat and transform. So that's interesting. That means this planet existed before Cybertronians existed. Yeah. Hmm. I always just assumed they made the planet. I think that's I think that's been established in Transformers canon. Actually, it's also been established in this might just be a comics thing, but it's been established in Transformers canon that Cybertron itself is Primus, who we've heard Prime, mentioned yeah. on Beast Wars like Optimus has been like, "Buy Primus." Yeah. Um and so Primus is like if Unicron is the devil, Primus is God. And so, like, yeah. Cybertron, in, like, the Transformers comics, like, Cybertron itself, like, Primus can transform just like Unicron does. Wild. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to talk about, like, the, the, the theme of faith in this episode. The fire, like, one, uh, Primal follows this light, this guiding light, to bring them here and save them. So that's faith in this guiding light and two when he touches the fire and like goes through it and it's just an illusion or a hologram that's like faith in himself too so faith in others and then faith in himself it's an interesting theme um going on here and indeed like you said he's like touched by the oracle get ready for a whole bunch of uh for the listeners, uh, I didn't really watch this show back in the day. Like, uh, Same. I've never I, seen this before. I, I was 14 when the show premiered, and uh, I checked it out because I loved Beast Wars. But at that point, I had already pretty much like outgrown like watching kids' shows. Little did I know I would return to them in my 30s. 
But, Little did we know. But I had pretty much out like stopped watching kids shows at that point. Um, but I, I kept up with Beast Wars, like because I wanted to see it through to the end. And then when I'm yeah. like, when they're like, oh, there, there's this sequel series coming out this fall, Beast Machines. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. And I watched the first, like, I think two episodes, and I'm like, eh, this isn't Beast Wars, this sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, what do you want from me? I was 14. Yeah. Um, and eh, 14 is the epi- the age where you're done with with stuff. Yeah. Um, I finally gave, me and a, a roommate of mine at the time, in 2008, finally gave the show a shot, because neither of us had ever watched through it at all and so we did and it had been long enough at that point that i was kind of unshackled by my reverence for beast wars so i kind of was able to take it on its own merits at that point and actually found it to be a really interesting show so different but very interesting different but interesting um I have not watched the show since, other than, as I mentioned, uh, watching like the first three or four episodes about a month ago when I bought the DVD. So I'm mostly going into this fresh. And uh, the point is, um, get ready, from what I remember, from watching this like, what, 13 years ago? Get ready for... A whole bunch of religious and spirit, religious motifs and themes of spirituality, because that is what this well, show I'm, is all about. I, I'm ready because I that was some of the more interesting stuff that I was interested in. Yeah, from Beast Wars, I was like, "Hey, what's going on there? Why why does Cheetor have vision quests? Hang on, is he clairvoyant? Wait, <laughs> yeah, um." Rhinox is like Rhinox, like ascends, sorry, descends into like Hades to like bring back the soul of like, like primal, like met, uh, metaphorically yeah. speaking, right? Like, there it touches on the spirituality a bit in Beast Wars, and that made me like really intrigued. And there's a whole lot more of that in this show. Oh, geez. And I mean, indeed, um, we're already seeing, starting to see it in this episode. I, right away. Can't, and, and the themes are pretty strong so far. So it so sucks. The, the show, like right from the first episode, is kind of showing its cards. Yeah. Uh, so when, when Primal takes that leap through the Stargate, and he sees all of... What does the uh, Oracle say? It says... um. All the the matrix has all of the all of the the life force of every living thing that's ever lived and ever will live. And he goes on this crazy flight through space past a whole bunch of sparks, and he sees a planet that's organic. But the lights light up, and it turns into Cybertron. Mm-hmm. So it was organic, but it became mechanical for the cyber for for the the Transformers. And so the Oracle uh, men- tells him basically that uh, if he if he wants to live, essentially, uh, he needs to be reformatted. Yeah. And indeed, light glows, and he emerges from the Stargate. Still a gorilla, looking very different, though. Oh, boy, oh, boy, does he look different, and I <laughs> actually don't hate it. He He's looking very, uh, I don't know if it's a, based on a type of gorilla, but he's very orangutan looking. Kind of, yeah. The, the very big, like, eye- eyebrows. Um, like the very big, um, like a uh, eyebrow ridge, and the 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 rounded, like he's very powerful looking, and he's got massive hands, like he's wearing like the world's biggest set of Hulk gloves. <laughs> yeah, his his arms are, he's he's, he's oh he's, his he's, hands um, specifically are like massive. Oh, specifically, yeah, they yeah. they taper off. So 
We're going to see some stylization, folks. And you know what? I I fucking like it. I really like all of their um what do we call these forms? That's still their their beast forms. Just just their beast forms, but their beast machines era beast forms. Yeah. I man, I've been I've been telling oh. you for a while. I had I had a feeling you were going to dig beast machines. Uh, if you cut to, I don't know if you're on Tubi, if you cut to 1257, speaking of themes of uh, faith, all three of them are on the steps. You know how there were some steps going up towards the Oracle? Um, just their upper bodies are on it, right? And it looks like they're almost like in reverence. Like they're almost, they have their arms splayed out praying. Oh, yeah, that? yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I see it. Yeah, so... I didn't catch that the first time I watched this. Man, I, he looks fucking dope. They're, and they're weird. So they're, they're bestial, mostly, except they have some cybernetic parts, like armored chunks to them, and his neck is all like cords. The term the show uses, this isn't much of a spoiler, because I think it, might get said in this episode is techno organic. They're techno organic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what did yeah. he say? What happened to you? And he's like, uh the the Oracle we we have to let the Oracle reformat us in order to survive. And indeed we see uh the silhouettes of Cheetor. Good man Good directing on this episode. The silhouette of them approaching the camera with the white light behind them. The, yeah. the director really loves uh, silhouettes. And I... Good job, man. And man, man. they look slick. Fuck, I, I like Cheetor. Cheetor's cat face is so cute. They, they look more <laughs> instead of... So I was complaining, because I really like G1. Uh, sorry, I really like Season 1 Beast Wars, right? Yeah, yeah. They look okay. more cat and more rat like now, despite the technical parts of them. Their faces look more rat and cat like. Yeah. I love Cheetor's face. Yeah, like you said, he he's a very cute cat now. Yeah. And uh, I I think it's probably just like part of it has to do with the fact that it's been three years now since season one of Beast Wars. They uh they know how to animate some some shit. Is what you're saying? Technology's gotten better. Like they they are a much more experienced studio at this point. And yeah, and um, even just the storytelling and the framing and the um um the the directing when they introduce um, Black Arachnia, one leg like slams down beside Cheetor and he gasps, and one leg slams down beside Rat Trap and he gasps, and they look up. And she's almost like a daddy long legs. Like her yeah. legs are very thin and spindly, but she's very tall. And I, I really, I really dig all of their forms. I thought I was going to hate it, man, but I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. She's uh gangly to the point that I kind of hate her form <laughs> as someone who hates spiders. Like a, Cause it looks yeah. like a real fucking spider. Yeah. <laughs> It's very daddy long legs ish. Have you ever seen one of those fuckers scrambling across the floor like very awkwardly? That's what she's got going going on here. Yeah. And so uh some more uh 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 drones show up. These ones aren't tanks, they kind of look like little like mini motorcycles. They're they're Tron bikes. <laughs> yeah, basically. So they show up and their uh, Cheetor is like, how about we give these new bodies a spin or something like that? I love this. <laughs> and they're all like, Maximals, maximize in this big Ooh. like action pose, and nothing happens. <laughs> Kudos to the writer. <laughs> I, I like Rat Trap's follow up line. He's like, hey, uh, these uh, new bodies come with a warranty. <laughs> And the uh, the Tron bikes transform into um, like motorcycle killbots. Yeah, 
Yeah, like little, like, like kind of like uh, Gizmo Duck type thing from Ducktales. Yeah, that, there you like, go. With one wheel on the bottom and very like top yeah, heavy like, with arms. Yeah, like top heavy like unicycle robots. Yeah, and um, they. Oh, I love that. I'm rewatching the part where they're like Maximals, maximize in the action pose. I was originally gonna make that the the art for the episode. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Rather than just just it's like you said though, the surprise cheetah and surprise gorilla face are more on brand. <laughs> yeah, but totally. this is like a shot of of all of them there. Yeah. So sorry, uh, they end up running, and uh, the running animations. Um, man, if you don't like spiders, there's giant running sp- <laughs> spider with them. Yep, they. Uh, she reminds me of the they ones that run across like my living room floor uh, a few times, to- like once every like few days. Um, Actually, to be fair, I haven't uh, for the past like two summers now. I haven't really. The place I that me and my partner live in, we've lived in for five years now. And for the first three years that we lived here, every yeah. summer there would be these like massive menacing spiders with these like huge, like long like leg spans. I look the, the they're what's called giant house spiders. We have giant house spite. So that's okay, that's so literally the name of them is giant yeah. house spider. I looked it up. So- so Anyone these things listening? would go like scurrying like once every like few days. One time, I shit you not, I saw six of them in one night. It, and I'm an arachnophobic. The same one, it was real busy. <laughs> and well, we killed all of them, but and I'm oh. an arachnophobic, so this is like fucking horrifying to me. Um, but fortunately, knock on wood, haven't really seen many of them for the past like two summers now. I and I hope them. that continues. Same. I used to see them all the time, and not not really recently. Um, Last year, I was like, "Oh shit! Did COVID kill them or something?" <laughs> the arachnid strain of COVID. Yeah, arachnovid, um, arachrona. I don't know. Uh, so the, yeah, we have it's we the have arachnid giant variant. <laughs> the arachnid variant. We have giant house spiders here, and they're they're just yeah, they're house spiders. So. The ones we see bombing around, then they're they're eerie and they're fast, <laughs> and they're very like clunky. They're harmless, and they're harmless. they're harmless. And the ones we're seeing um, are the males. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what they're doing is they can like s- pheromones. I guess they can sense or smell um, the females, and the females will make like a little nest in a corner and hide somewhere dark. Yeah. And the males bomb around, they fight each other, and they look for the females. Yeah. And they they I've never been bitten by one, but they're they're creepy. <laughs> for an arachnophobe like myself, like they are horrifying to witness, but they are harmless. Yeah. I'm still gonna kill those motherfuckers every single time though. I don't I, I don't give try a shit. To, I try to catch and release Every animal that I don't want near me. X. I, okay. I draw, X- I draw the line with uh, with bugs and arachnids and creepy crawlies and stuff. I, I X- believe in for things like rodents and whatnot. I believe in not. Or, or, I almost said non-humane. <laughs> I believe in non-lethal uh, trapping measures. Okay, so the thing I the Predacon I hunted earlier was a moth, and if you're familiar with the triangular shaped like moths that flutter weird and they fall to avoid you smacking them, those are the moths that eat your clothes. And I yeah. really like moths; they're one of my favorite animals. But those guys have to die. <laughs> I, I don't spend money on clothes for them to be eaten by hundreds of moths. So sorry, they're moths. a menace. Damn it, <laughs> they're a menace. Get me pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> get me pictures of those moths. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to. My nose is starting to get plugged up. So Uh-oh. I, listeners, I apologize. Uh, bear with me if I'm starting to sound kind of nasally. There's a cat nearby. 
Oh shit. So what it's is true. um primal what does Gary Primal say here? He says, Hey, the very first Cybertronians had to learn how to how to transform. It took years, and Rat Trap's like, We ain't got years. years. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. So they 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 run and they all split up. Yeah. And the uh the the V they're called Viacons. Oh, Viacons. Okay. It ha- I I've been trying to like avoid saying it throughout the episode because it hasn't been revealed yet, but I keep almost saying it. So finally, I'm just like, fuck. It. They're Viacons. That's what they are. Yeah. Viacons. And what were the tank ones called? Oh, uh, they're they're all Viacons. Oh, they're all Viacons. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Rat Trap gets the the drop on one. Um, Cheetor like. Go Sonic Spinball, and he's like, "Oh, oh God!" You, that you animation of Black Arachnia running through the tunnel. Ugh. <laughs> That's very Spider-ish. Yeah. So Cheetor goes, "Huh? So you want to play Fast Kitty?" I I don't know. He says some Cheetor bullshit, and he bounces yeah. across the walls, and then he takes his yeah, he um, fucking Sonic oh. Spinballs. Yeah, <laughs> he he literally ding 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 ding, and then hits then takes out and explodes the Vehicon. Uh, rat trap kind of, and he turns and like there's like fire again, like light against him, and he growls and his silhouette, uh, his shadow is on the wall. It's very well directed. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, rat trap does some sneaky moves. He does a sneaky rat thing, and he takes his out. Uh, oh, he bites the tire. He lands on it and like takes out the the tire. They're and um they're pretty capable in their their beast forms, gotta say. And and that's what I I I like about this because the big theme about Beast Wars was hey, we can be really dangerous in our beast mode. And so that was like the maximal edge, right? And yeah, for yeah. them to be taken out these guys so easily in their beast modes makes me feel like they're very comfortable and very formidable in their their beast modes and it that to me makes it feel like an accurate continuation from beast wars so i i really yeah, dig yeah. that like they've they've spent a lot of time in these forms right yeah um presumably black arachnia like eats her pursuer because her fangs are going nuts as she catches one in her web I, I like how she literally just like throws a web up. Like she lifts her legs up and it like throws a web. Oh, it looked like she had like two two lines and she pulled them like drawstrings. Yeah. Almost. Like yeah. Uh so what does Optimus do? Optimus just like gorilla punches some of them. Yeah. yeah, he's punching a bunch. Uh he's punching them, like giving them the old one two. The old one-two punch, see? He's giving them the old one-two punch, but they get the better of him, see? And they knock him off a cliff. Yep. And uh, Optimus is, like, falling, and he remembers the Oracle. We we forgot to mention this, but the the, the Oracle says to... What is it? To tame the beast within, you must... Uh, master tame, the beast without to tame the beast without one second here. I'm I'm right there. See if I put the audio on, it'll end up in the episode. Right. Yeah. I'll let you know. <laughs> the seeds to release the, the warrior within, you must tame the beast without. Right. Right. The there seeds of the future lie buried in the past. And he says that a lot. Yeah. yeah. So as he's falling, Optimus has like a, a Zen like meditation moment and he like closes his mouth and his eyes and he begins to glow. Yeah. And uh, boy, oh boy, is this transformation sequence different. It's It's morphing more than transforming. Yeah. So the toy makers, I don't, I don't know if Daddy Hasbro would like would like their transformation sequences because they don't mechanically shift into a new form. They just kind of like 
CG morph. Yeah, that's one thing I'm not sure that I I I like. Well, you don't get the because <laughs> like, like the 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 sight of them, like the parts moving and everything like that is d- one cool. of our favorite things was Dinobots like head spinning and his limbs coming out and yeah. yeah. Um, so we don't really get that with this. I like after he transforms. Um, Optimate uh, Gary Primal is like I am transformed. That's the uh, that's the new maximize for this show, and I guess so. And he's got jets, and he super apes punches some of them, and he looks like the protagonist to a failed PlayStation One video game, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. <laughs> like you'd see him on the cover, and you'd always see the game at Blockbuster, and you'd go, "Eh," because the cover art wasn't very good. And... It'd be it'd be a game that would end up in the bargain bin after like three months. But but you wouldn't even buy it for even ten bucks because you're like, I don't know what this is. You're like, wow, this was sixty bucks like a month ago, and now it's ten. This must be a great game. Mom, can I have it? <laughs> it's 10 bucks. <laughs> I bought back in back in those days, I bought so many bargain bin games, no matter how fucking terrible they were, just because they were cheap. Back when I was like 13, 14 with a uh with a PS1. I did a bad thing and I just spilled water all over myself and keyboard. Oh no. I got too excited. Well, and indeed, uh, Gary Primal here uh, apparently gets too excited as he's flying around enjoying his new uh, his new robot body, and uh, he loses concentration and shifts back into beast mode. Is that what happened? He like lost his zen. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that's exactly what happened. He 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 lost his zen. Fortunately, it uh, it it happened after he took out all of the vehicles. So problem. For, fortunately, solved. yeah, problem solved. So they're not in any immediate danger anymore. Good, but but his maximal troops are like so. Optimus, uh, what now? And he's like, our training. We must train. Our training begins yeah. immediately. Neo, your training begins immediately, Neo. (laughs) Your training (laughs) begins immediately, Neo. You think that's air you're breathing? (laughs) Uh, And so so basically, they're all trying to transform, and uh, Primal is like, Stop trying to hit me and hit me. And (laughs) Rat Trap's having some. Some trouble, but the others managed to to get it done. Or do they? Am I jumping ahead? I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, they they don't transform this episode. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Somehow I merged two episodes together. Uh, sorry, I they was go like, off. How, do I was their... like, how are you on episode two? Whoopsies. Uh, <laughs> sorry, they go off to train. Like they you go said. off to. They go off to train, and we cut to a uh, a dark chamber. Very with, dark. Uh, someone suspended from a uh, a ceiling. Yeah, some lawnmower man shit is going on. Someone with a uh, thing connected to their head with some like like gear, like cables and gears, like little like mechanical digits moving. Like, it's so creepy looking, but I, I dig it. But it's creepy looking. It's yeah, it's bad guy thing. It's um it's uh oh what's that um very cyberpunk um game, uh not Deus Ex, um System System Shock? Shock. Is it yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It, system System Shock 2 specifically. That's it's, the one it's everyone. It's giving me system shock vibes. Did I just reveal how old I am by Mentioning System Shock. 
There's been a remake of that game in development for like ten years now. It's a little. It's uh, it's development. It keeps getting. Now. It keeps. Yeah, it keeps getting delayed. The developers yeah. like we're still working on it, guys. It's every, coming. I swear. Every, I completely every, forgot about that over the last five years. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got System Shock Megatron. It's it's our boy Megatron, David K himself, and uh, he's like, ah. Oh. So the Maximals survive in their disgusting techno-organic forms. Yeah, not, uh... Not as, not, uh, not as Shakespearean as he used to be. Uh, but much scarier? Yeah, totally. And right. the... The seething hatred he has, he's like, I will get rid of them in their disgusting organic forms. And because he's in this big, like, barrel machine with, like, shit going on, wires and servos right. and stuff going on behind his head. And I'm like, damn. That's, <laughs> uh, that's like the machines from, from the Matrix, the, almost like the squiddies or whatever, right? And uh, he's scary. And, and given, like, like I said, as with the music, like, the, this show came out, like, what, like, six months after The Matrix? That is enough time. It is. <laughs> for them to. <laughs> like, I feel like they went and saw The Matrix and immediately were like, that was fucking hype. We need to, like, we're working on this show, Beast Machines. We need to incorporate some shit from The Matrix. You know Matrix how Neil's got, like, all these fucking like wires and shit going in the back. Imagine Megatron in a tube and he's got wires and shit going in his neck. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ. Yeah, I, so I, I dig it. That's the episode. That's the, the first episode of Beast Machines. That's it. That is it. Uh here on Too Much Energon. We rate things on the too much Energon scale. From the bottom to the top, it's a three tier scale system. Not enough Energon, a sufficient amount of Energon, and too much Energon. Christopher Siege, what do you rate? Episode one The Beast Machines. The first half of the episode is literally just them running with explosions going on with, like, Matrix-inspired techno music playing. <laughs> um, but you know what? I kind of dig it. And it was I, animated I, and shot well, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? I'm giving this episode a too much energy on. I, I, I really dig it. It, uh... It sets up like all of the ideas that the uh, of the show, like it, like I said earlier, like the the show, uh, the series is showing its cards like immediately with the first episode. Like, yeah, th this sets up like exactly what we're in for with this series, like based on what I remember from, like I said, like my one watch through of it like thirteen years ago. But um, I'm here for it. Yeah, too much energy. On. Uh, I I thought I would really dislike this. Like I said, the first minute I was like, "Yeah, well, uh, well, wait a second, wait a second. And then the music's hype, and he's gorilla swinging, and the music's like, "Bam, bam, 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 bam!" Now and there's explosions, and I'm like, <laughs> "I this is this is Cybertron Matrix, and I'm okay with that." And they, th there's even an entity called the Oracle. I yeah. too much energy on. Technically, this energy is before on. the Matrix did the whole Oracle thing because the Oracle didn't appear in the Matrix until the sequels. Well, they go to see the Oracle in the first one, and she tells oh, him, "Oh fuck, you're he, right. Yeah, never mind." And she I'm she tells dumb. him, "Uh, he's not the one." Right. Yeah. I I right after right after I said it, I'm like, no, wait, I'm wrong. I'm dumb. Listeners. Yeah. I'm an idiot. <laughs> my, my my online handle NeoCal is is not taken lightly. I I might know a thing or two about the Matrix. I won't quote the script, but I 
I'm a fan. I only just rewatched that movie like maybe a year ago too. Like that fourth one's coming out soon. I I'm gonna watch all three of them before the fourth one, and I it can be pretty bad, and I would still be forgiving. But I I don't know. I I don't think it's gonna be bad. I'm I'm pretty hyped. I I was. Back in the day, I was I was definitely like super into the like around the time the sequels came out, like I was super into the Matrix. I saw Reloaded opening day. Um, I I bought the Animatrix. I bought the Matrix like comics trade paperback. Like I bought the uh, that bad video game Enter the Matrix just because like the plot of it connect had it had live action cutscenes with actors from the Matrix Reloaded and the plot like connected to the Matrix Reloaded. So it, it did and it showed what um you play as do you just play as one? You play you as play Niobe as... and someone else. I can't you play as Niobe name. and some dude. And some dude <laughs> yeah, some dude. <laughs> He's um, he's in the movie like he when they're yeah. he's at that like captain's meeting that they go he's to. He's one of the other captains just like Naomi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um and you get to see what they're up to. Uh there's a Matrix game that I played through twice called uh Pat, Path the of Path Neo. of Neo. Yeah. Actually pretty fucking good. <laughs> I loved that game. The end of that game is so bananas like you fight like a giant like I love it. Like mega like megazord version of Smith, basically. And like they're they're straight up this like white room with the Wachowskis, like just sitting there, like talking, being like, uh, yeah, this was our idea, original idea that for the for the game, but like that didn't work out. So this is what we're gonna do instead. Or something like that. I don't know. I played through it once. Yeah, they were like, like this is one of our like ago. early ideas, but we wanted it to be instead of like a big battle, more of like a a moment where Neo has to accept his fate, right? But right. Um, here's an alternative ending, and we uh, we hope you like it. And it's all the the Smiths piling into a, a giant like mega zone, yeah. <laughs> fighting him in the air. And... Yeah, yeah, it's it's bananas. It, anyway, it's bananas. Um, what's your rating for this episode? Oh, sorry, yeah, too much it's... energy, on, folks. Woo. Super too much energon. Super much energon. <laughs> that's a that's a new rating for this show right oh, there. Yeah. I like I was saying earlier. Like I've been I, I've been saying for a while that I had a feeling you were gonna like Beast Machines. I I just had a feeling. I didn't know it was the Matrix on Cybertron. <laughs> I I didn't know, man. Yep. We well, did it. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I think that that's about it. That's I think this it. is going to literally be the shortest episode of Too Much Energy on ever. Oh, that that's okay. It was hype. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that has been uh, episode fifty-one of Too Much Energy on. Uh, best way to support the show, if you whatever you're listening to this on, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Give it a five star rating. Anything helps us out with discoverability. Uh, we also have a Patreon. Uh, you heard a little blurb about it earlier on in the, the episode, but uh, check that out. Patreon.com slash lasercomb, L A Z O R C O M B. At the $10 and up tier, you get our weekly, weekly weird new, like weird and dumb news show, Laser Comb Tonight. And you also get our uh, spinoff of this show, Too Much Galavar, where we talk about the 2021 IDW Beast Wars comic. Uh, the uh, first episode of that is actually, by the time you're listening to this, that's already gone live. So go check that out. Patreon.com slash Laser Comb. Uh, Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash too much energy on. Uh, or if you want to just follow Laser Comb Productions and see updates from all of the various podcasts that we do, go to facebook.com slash laser comb. Um, wow, my nose is getting really stuffed up. Uh, you can creep too much energy on on Twitter. 
Yeah, too much energy on Twitter, Twitter dot or at too much energy on, or you can follow me at Lasercomb, spelled the same way as the Patreon and the Facebook page. L a z o r c o m b. Cal, you are on Twitter as well. I'm on the Twitters at Neo underscore Cal K A L. Cheers. We will be back next week with episode 52 of Too Much Energon, where we are talking about the second episode of Beast Machines. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Master of the House is the name of that episode, according to Wikipedia. I've already watched it. It's a good one. Uh, I started watching it accidentally, apparently. <laughs> uh, no spoilers, damn it. Uh, that about and... that about does it. We're gonna get out of here. I've been one of your hosts, Christopher Siege. I'm your other host, Neo Cal. And until next week, I am transformed. Maximals, maximize. Bye bye. <laughs>